Hey, I'm Pete from PMG Auto Care. I'm also an idiot. I forgot to record the intro of this while the car was still with us. But anyway, today's video is going to be all about an Abarth 124 Spider. <laughs> Chances are, unless you are an enthusiast of these, probably have never seen an Abarth 124 Spider. They're a pretty rare little car. Um, well, a lot of people don't really know what they are. Basically, they're an Italian spicy take on an MX-5. They share a lot of the platform with Mazda, except, well, the Italians do the style in that little bit better. And then instead of Mazda's effort, they pop in that turbocharged four pot that you would be familiar with with the Abarth 500. It sounds like that, it sounds great. I'm sure we all know what one of those sound like. So really cool little car, neat little package. This one though needs a lot of TLC. As you can see from the walk around, very, very grubby. There's a lot of built up dirt and algae. And I can see that the paint is in not great shape already through the dirt. But the first thing we need to prioritize here is getting it back to a clean slate before we even think about any paint correction. Now the hood's got a bit of grime built up in that, so we're going to clean it first and get that back to looking as good as it can. And then we'll start in the washing and prepping the body. There's going to be a lot of clean, a lot of fallout remover, just a lot of getting it squeaky clean. So let's crack on with that and then we'll see what we're dealing with. I thought this would be a perfect time to show you exactly what's involved in prepping a hood because a lot of people are intimidated by cleaning their hoods, um, protecting them, maintaining them, etc. So first of all, I like to get the hood soaking wet. This is before we put any chemical on it. It means that we can use a slightly stronger concentration of the cleaning chemical, in this case, a citrus. Um, it means that we can just spray that liberally all over the hood, um, let it dwell and work its magic. As you'll see, really, really soaking that hood down making sure that we are not missing a drop. Now that it is soaked well and truly with chemical, it's time to take a stiff bristled brush. This time with us, it's a red and green Viking brush and just really scrub, scrub, scrub at that hood. Now, if you have a mohair hood, you might want to use a gentler agitation brush than this. With this canvas roof, this is ideal. Paying attention to all the seams and all the areas where the green has built up. But it's important still to brush out all of the roof where you can. You'll see the algae is turning the soap green in the really heavily concentrated areas. And you really just want to keep scrubbing at that until it's coming up as clean as possible within the soap mixture. As you can see, extremely grubby, particularly along that seam where the algae is building up. Same with that side seam where it meets the window line. You might have to repeat this process a few times to get the desired result. You're going to have to rinse it in between each of those stages and make sure it is thoroughly and well rinsed. And now to the rinse stages, this is where a lot of people get it wrong with cleaning the convertible roof. You'll have heard that you can't use a pressure washer on a roof, and while that is strictly true, that's more to do with how close that people use the washer into the roof. If you've ever seen a hood with a stripe pattern, you can see a lot of people think that is from the power washer cleaning the roof. It's not, it's actually from it damaging the fabric itself. But as long as you're using it at a great distance, like we're doing here, it is the most effective way to clean out all of that soap. And what we're looking for is that soap to be coming out white and pure and clean, and then rinsing away to nothing that is just water. That's when you have it thoroughly done. If you're still seeing some green as you're doing this, it's worth giving the roof another scrub and another soaking with citrus beforehand. You have to repeat this process as many times as necessary until you're getting nothing but crystal clean white 
residue. And finally, when that's dry, you can put some protect on it. And for now, we move on to the wash stages as normal. That's the wash process completing this. It was pretty intensive. There was a lot of built up algae and dirt, loads of tar on the car, loads of just bonded contaminants. It needed quite a bit of clean as well. Now it's a clean slate and we've got it back in here under these intense lights. We can see what we're really going to be working with. Now I'm sure you'll have seen through the dirt in our initial opening stages before we'd even touched the car. It was pretty evident that the paint isn't in great condition in this. But hey, that's what it's here for. And we're going to try and do full correction on this. What's possible, we'll only know once we get started into it. But we thought, let's pop the camera off, do the walk around and show you what we see all around the car. It's really important that we take this time and assess a vehicle before we jump into it. And the other thing that plays a factor in this is, we haven't done very many of these. In fact, I think we've only done two of these previously and they were both white. So I don't really know what is going to work best with it. I think we're going to have to be pretty aggressive, but I'll show you what we mean. So starting off with this bonnet, I can say there is a variety of issues right from the get-go. The first being, this has been refinished and it is just an okay job. It's a little dull and flat looking. It's hard to maybe pick that up just on camera. But if you want to look directly at it, especially the, the light source to the top right there, you'll see there's just no definition to that finish. So we're gonna to have to try and sharpen that up and bring that back to a more factory-like finish. Plus then you have all these holograms and swirl marks. And I think we had seen evidence of a cat walking along the bonnet before it was washed. So what's gonna work in this bonnet might not necessarily work in the rest of the car because it's different paint type. I haven't seen if any of the rest of the vehicle has been painted as yet because uh, this is the one thing that just really stood out to me. And then the front bumper, we've got lots and lots of fly etching. This can happen, especially in the summertime, if the car gets caked and flies at the front and you aren't washing the car frequently enough. They sit in there, they bake in the sun, and, well, they need polishing to remove. And the sides of the car, we're not faring any better. You can see some deep scratches there along the very top edge of the wing, and then some very deep scratches in around here. If we get right in the nose, I don't think we're going to be able to totally fix these. We'll probably make them a good bit better, but they're certainly not going to totally repair. And as they get lower down to the car, you see they'll set up another light source here, 
just generally very swirly, um, dull, lifeless finish. And then we have two different other paint types in this car to do with. We have the solid red of the mirrors, and then this is a metallic gray on the windscreen surround. So, so I haven't done many of these. If this would be a German car, I would know exactly what to try, even if I'd never done one before. Italian cars, well, we'll try the good trusty Ferrari combination and see how that goes. So to be honest, I'm probably going to want to be quite aggressive with this. Like, I mean, look at that. <laughs> so yeah, lots to do, quite the challenge. So we definitely, definitely have our work cut out for us. This will be enjoyable, particularly if it plays ball. I don't think I'm going to mess around. I'm just going to jump straight in with a heavy combination on this. Go in, go in with our trusty five inch Meguiar's microfiber cotton pads. They work so well. And then I'm going to just balance that out with just some correction fluid to try. And as I said, the bonnet might react differently than the rest of the car. We're just going to have to take this one as we go. But it's going to be such a drastic transformation. It'll be so satisfying. Let's just get stuck into it. We'll see where we go. We could end up in foam with a, a fairly soft combination if it's soft, sticky paint. Or we could end up upping it to some 105 to really push if it's hard paint. Let's just see where we end up. Isn't that a transformation and a half? In the end, we just had to beat the devil out of it. <laughs> just beat the devil out of it. But the results were totally worth it. It has transformed that finish. It fixed a lot better than I ever thought it was going to from that initial walk around. And well, the combination that we used, slightly different. That bonnet, as I say, had been refinished. We ended up using a Roots wool pad and some Koshmi Heavy Cut for that. When we got down onto the sides of the car, that just wasn't aggressive enough. I expect this car to be a little bit soft and sticky, but it was actually pretty hard paint. It was actually pretty sort of, uh, similar to a German car. So we went down the route of the Meg's microfiber system with that, and it worked an absolute treat. Now, it's left a little bit of Micromarn here and there, it's not really a big deal. We're refining the car anyway. And that's the bit we're going to jump onto now. There's so much metallic in this and it's got a nice gloss already. This is going to really, really sharpen up the finish of that car and just give the look that we're looking for. Then we can get the coatings on and that's another job wrapped up. Sounds simple, probably still another 10 to 12 hours ahead of us. Let's get cracking and see if we can get it look even better. <laughs>
refinement really was the Italian secret sauce in this recipe. The car looks absolutely amazing. The paint looks bellissimo. So now it's time to protect it. Well, we're actually going to start out with protecting the hood. Part of the reason I ended up in that mouldy, untidy mess to begin with was because there was no fabric protector on it. So we'll sort that out with a liberal dosing of G Techniques Smart Fabric. Then we're going to move on, put some protection on the glass, and then finally lay some Crystal Serum Ultra and Exo down on the body, which is just going to push to finish this even further again. Really enjoying this one so far. We're so close to the end goal though, so let's get it finished. protection laid down, our little Italian stallion is finished, so there's just one thing left to do and I'll show you guys it finished. <laughs> There's no denying how good that looks. It is just a different car than the one that was left off. And now hopefully it's in this condition, and especially with all of the protection applied, it's gonna make it really simple and straightforward for the owner to keep it this way. I'm sure he's gonna be absolutely delighted when he sees it. I know I'm delighted with how it turned out. And just like that, another video is drawn to a conclusion. If you haven't already, please like and subscribe to the channel. We're trying to continue with this weekly uploads and the next one up is going to be this lovely r32 golf behind us all right guys thanks for watching we'll see you again soon